talked about it, I'm going to ask you this before we get into bands, because it, 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 it goes with this, is game three, you're down, or it's pretty much one-to-one. -one. All those first games didn't matter. You're in the final game. The winner of this takes all. What do you do? Do you, do you pull out something extremely crazy, something wild that you catch another team off guard with, or are you going to play something comfortable that you know you can Look, do well with? Zyra, Zillion, Katarina. You totally Jesus, called man. that. Jesus, man. You're a prophet. Jesus. To change your alias. And uh, of course, Medium Makers ban Diana as well, because they don't, they don't play him. I'm pretty happy, man. I'm so waiting for you to answer that, my question. That, that was like in bowls, man, like <laughs> doing a fool, you know? So we got a scanner first pick. I'm not so sure that it's a good idea, to be honest. Um, before Alistar was nerfed, Alistar was actually the best pick ever against Scanner, but he got so nerfed actually, it's, it's not even worth picking him. So I'm not sure what they're gonna go for. Maybe, oh no, no Javan Jungle, please. Maybe it's Yaman Top, no? Doesn't, doesn't Seeken play a lot of Yaman Top? Yeah, Zeke, Zeke, uh, a lot of Jarvan, I don't know. Demon? But Demon? Th doesn't Seeken play a lot of Yaman Top? Yeah. Okay. Oh, so we might see him use that then. That would be really good to watch, man. Yaman Top is actually a lot of damage. Like he rushes Trinity Force, he can just go directly for Lady Carry. It's just like one shot. He's really, really strong. All right, well, we see Graves locked in as well. So uh, Robert X Lee going to be able yeah. to have his Graves again. We went 16 0 last game on it. And let's see if he can pull it off this time. And I asked you before, as they're doing picks, uh, you know, it's one to one. Those games don't matter anymore. You're in the last game. Winner of this takes first place I, uh, in Tokyo Street Master Singapore. Do you take out something crazy, something that the other team's never seen, or do you play comfortable with no knowing what you can play um, and try to win that way? Every time you try something you are not sure if it's going to work, it doesn't work. There you go. Pretty solid answer. Especially in, F in offline events. If, if you try, oh, I'm going to play this hero even though I didn't train much online, it never works. You normally fail so much. <laughs> but if you have something really, really, really special, really, really special, but if, if you know it's coming, you can you can deal with it, like, I don't know, roaming Tarek, say. Uh, what? This is the time to... This <laughs> that, that's a really bad example, but yeah. This is the time to bust it out, though. It's the time to, to bust it out, right? So. Yeah, indeed. If you if you have practiced it, like no, you know. If you're pra if you have practiced it, it's like the perfect moment to pull that out. Like one big, I mean one one, you can just wreck wreck this game by early game domination. That's honestly this game. Nobody wants to do a single mistake. So if you just take your team and go for pretty much early game domination, opponent will not know how to contest it. Honestly, they're gonna go so defensive. They they don't want to fight. They don't want to do anything. Level one. We will see what happens, man. Maybe both teams have the same aggressive, aggressive mind style. But I actually think, I don't mind, man. I think Meteor Makers is going to be a bit behind in this turn, in this sense. I think Meteor Makers is going to be a little bit behind. Um, a little bit scared, you could say. Well, for Absolute Legends, we have a really strong combo here with Orianna, Lulu, and Jarvan. You know, obviously, Jarvan will Cataclysm onto someone, and then they have the knockup, the pull in, or well, the pull and then the knockup. We saw that actually happen, um, I believe it was the first day. They didn't actually pull it off the right way. Uh, but when they did one time, uh, they were really far behind. They actually w uh, won that fight. So we could see something like that happen again for Absolute Legends. And they really in top lane. Really, really... Like, I I'm loving this, this bomb and pick phase. Because Malphite is banned. Diana is banned. So Malphite cannot, cannot collide with Orianna because he's banned. Diana cannot corner Diana. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, Diana cannot <laughs> corner uh, Orianna because he's banned. Katarina cannot corner Diana. Same for Zillion because he's banned. Orianna. I don't know. Is it, I don't know. But it, this is a really, really interesting pick phase. Oh, so that might be a jungle Jarvan if they do lock in that Jax. TF, TF mid lane plus Vayne bottom with Nunu. That is that is a really good setup now that I think about it. If TF manages to give Vayne some kills or assist, you know the game is going to be over. Yeah, in the game yesterday where we saw Vayne, you actually called it, even though they were really far behind, you're like 78.5% chance <laughs> that they're going to come back. <laughs> and and because of that Vayne, they did, yeah. Vayne is such a strong champion. It's a one-trick pony. I won't, I won't deny that. But that pony man... <laughs> <laughs> that's a really strong that horse. Pony, that's a thorough That pony man. <laughs> God. Oh, man, that's in you. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to understand what he was doing. Oh. <laughs> it's fine, man. <laughs> I don't think he realizes <laughs> he was being seen. Okay, it's fine. Uh, so anyways, Jack's going to get locked in. We yeah, have our Jack's setups. Yeah, a really good combo, uh, as well as Yav uh, with, with Yavan. I'm, I'm liking this combo a lot. Um, then uh, Medium Makers, as I said, got uh, Irela top lane. That is a, a potential killing top lane with TF. Irela provides uh, enough CC to, to get a killing top. And as I said, bottom lane. If, if somehow Graves and Lulu go aggressive and TF is aware of it and in range, that is going to be the game deciding point. All right. Well, the timer is almost counting down. I think it's time to go over to the best casters on planet Earth. What do you think? Lee, are you listening? <laughs> are you ready? 
Thanks, man. You can take it away. So we are back then and ready to kick off game number three. That pony that and lost for words. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've never heard that one, but I've got to use it in the future. I'm not sure if I'll use it on stream, though, I have to be honest. Uh, so, Demon, game number three, it's all down to this one. We can forget what's happened in the last two. Uh, this is going to decide the champion of the Intel Extreme Masters Singapore. And one team, obviously, out of Meet Your Makers and Absolute Legends, will win their first ever major event. Yeah, and, and I can see what Oslo's saying about Meet Your Makers. The fact that the, the pressure is on them because they've just lost the game. So yeah. the, the pressure, the, the memento... Uh, would be with Absolute Legends, but the last two picks they just made were pretty damn strong ones. Twisted Fate and Vayne. Well, we saw them go 10-2 down in the game when they had Vayne. Vayne got that triple kill. Game over. Game yeah. over, man. You just can't give him those kills. And now the fact that he's got Libic alongside him on the Nunu, they've got that Nunu. Uh, honestly, to me, that seems like a, a, a bigger thing for these guys. But let's get into the game. You can see they are live. So... As the blue team, it will be Meet Your Makers, and the red team will be Absolute Legends. And the question is, will we see an invade? Absolute Legends looking like they want it. They are stacking up. Will it be a late invade? Will Kubon, who's gone into that tri-bush a good few times, stroll right into there? Oh, good Lord, Kubon. He's going to do it. I'm absolutely certain he's going to walk up that way. Well, right now, just holding back. That's a five-man stack in this tri-bush. That's a dead Kubon if he goes in there. But also, they won't have a clue. If they go looking, he's going to be able to get out of that, dis that decision, and they're going to know that they're going for that blue buff, so they're going to be able to counter it quickly. So if they give their position away, if they get a bit antsy and go early, which is looking like they might do the way they're fidgeting, I don't think they're going to go for a 1 minute 50 invade here. This is going to be an early invade, probably in about a couple of seconds, and maybe head towards the wolves. Well, the thing is, Twisted Fate and Vayne are down here. Nunu at the Wraiths, Skarni, so they, it's going to take them quite a while to get in around to this one, as Jarvan is going to show himself, he's going to throw that flag in right on top of Irelia, so they know that now, and I wonder if Absolute Legends, seeing Irelia, are expecting that the rest of Meet Your Makers were there, looking like that is exactly the case, as we see the bottom lane portal in back, uh, Jarvan is going to go back in, actually they decided to uh, have a look and really check if Irelia was alone, but Jarvan is already starting off with his race, no help for him though up until now, and so look at this invade, possibly up towards the blue buff. So no lane switch. That's what they were contemplating there. That's what the pings were coming down. They wonder, are we going to go for the lane switch? They are going for the invade. Can they manage to steal it away before the rest of the team react to it? They're going to see the might meet your makers are there. Yoda's going to come around. As soon as he puts that Damascus standard down, they're going to try and slide in, try and get that steal. They go straight towards it. They don't want to fight for it. But Makata doesn't really want to give this one up either because he needs that blue buff. It's very vital to Ascana in the jungle. Jarvan can live without it. And you can see it's actually reset. They forced it towards it. There's the ball. It's only got an attack ball. There's no dissonance to follow it up. Zaken, though, with it, if he manages to land that counter strike, they have to flash out. So flash is already forced. That was the top lane, and we're going to have to keep our eye on whether Aurelia loses that one. They've picked up the blue buff. They're going to go aggressive. Here comes Shiro coming around the side, though. Lands the stun guard onto Slushy. Slushy exhausted. Is it going to be enough? Kubon turning on towards him. Three people low on health. The attack damage goes through. There's another stun guard on Slushy. Slushy goes down. First put to Shiro. Now they flash through. Is he going to follow? No. Multiple flashes burn, but the first blood went to Shiro. Meet your makers with the advantage. Yeah, that was a fantastic bit of play. You notice they... Pretty much, <laughs> uh, pretty much ignored Jax there. And that's why I was like halfway trying to get them both in the screen because Jax was just stood there in that blue off pit, just waiting. They weren't doing anything. Uh, and then they managed to follow in, kill uh, Oriana there for that first blood. Uh, and as you said, uh, and really as Ocelot said, if this Twisted Fate can get around the map, uh, like we've seen him um, doing in those previous games, like we've seen Charo doing those uh, previous matches, then this could be very, very deadly, especially if he doesn't take all the kills himself, but he allows Vayne and Irelia to be picking those kills up as well. And the problem with that fight as well is the fact that Jax did use that counter strike, used it quite early on. Yeah, He's got else. a huge cooldown yeah. after that, so he had nothing else to give. So the rest of the team just like, well, he's already used his ability. Let's go. Everybody went straight in there. And as soon as that stun card landed, it was it was easy target. Slushy going to go down. Oriam is always going to be the squishy one there. So that's going to be the advantage in the middle. Let's see what they can do with it. He's got the blue buff for the mid laner. No blue buff, of course, for Skarner, though. So Skarner is going to be behind. You can see he's on red buff right now. He's just going to be picking that one up. But this is the fight. This is the bottom fight. Yeah. We just saw Robert Lee go 16-0-7 or something like that on, on Graves. 
How can Makla deal with this one? This time on Vayne. He was on Cogmore before. And Vayne, another game, late game champion that can get fed and will be very strong. But you can still already see they're up against it. Makla could have got a condemn on the wall there. Didn't go for it. The exhaust goes down. Here comes Makato. Makato just coming out of the jungle. Has got the red buff. The red buff gets the slow on him. They're going to continue through. They get the gamble. Robert Lee's going to get dropped. It's Makla that picks up the kill. Ah. And that is exactly what the bottom lane needed. Yeah, that is exactly what they needed in there. With, uh, you know, if it's not Twisted Fate, why not Skarna coming in there, doing a great job. Flashed in there, got the slow with the auto attack, with that red buff on, and that's where he just thought, oh, okay, well, that one is going to be over. And uh, that's going to be a bit more farm for free for this vein. Spells it actually in the bottom there. I'd say needs to be a little bit careful. I mean, if Libby gets a slowdown onto him, there's, no, oh, there is, sorry, a flash on Spells it. Uh, actually, Libby used both his flash and his exhaust during that last encounter. And it looks like Vin is going to be going home to spend uh, almost 1,200 gold. That's a big, big advantage early on. And there's a double Doran's blade. That's what the first blood in the farm does for you. And a pink ward being picked up by, wow. by the carry. That does surprise me. So Magda wants to clear out them wards that Spells he's put into that bush. They want to make sure they get that advantage which means they want to continue putting that pressure on towards Robert Lee. They want to help out. Twisted Fate could also get down there, but they want to help out. They want Makata comes down. He wants his brother's help in that lane. Yep, and meanwhile we see Jarvan just placing a ward here by the Wraiths. Want that vision, want to figure out where Skarna's going to be. That's uh, one of the key ward positions, obviously. Not that it's going to give you any, um, any indication of anything silly going on, but the fact that the jungle is there, top lane is safe, or bottom lane is safe even at least for a while uh, when they spot him around that area. So good ward out from Yoda, and that should offer them some for the future. This bottom lane, double Doran's Blade on Vayne, like you said, compared to this single Doran's Blade on Robert Lee. The good thing that Robert Lee has that you now Graves has massive burst damage. He does have massive burst damage, and he has got enough that maybe can find those cards. Ooh, Sharu having to use the flash up there, so Yoda, Yoda doing his job. Coming out of that jungle, causing problems. Makla, though, continuing to keep this farm on down the bottom. Top lane, we just saw Jax going back. Jax hand to bite, go back and bite. Hasn't really fell too far. Here comes Twisted Fate. It's on towards Spellsy to condemn on the wall. That's a very dead little Lulu. And it's Sharu that picked it up this time around. Again, this is what happened. This is what Absolute Legends did in the last game. The right people getting the right kills. These teams know how to feed them. Yeah, and Charu taking that one, and that'll put him 2-0. to zero. And again, gone for these boots of mobility. Gets him out of the lane quick enough. And, well, he That's can pull in first there. item, though. I mean, after a Doran's Blade, and then just going straight boots of mobility? Yeah, but if you, if you manage to snowball your other lanes in there, I mean... Vayne, we all know, even if she's not really picking up kills, she's only going to get stronger and stronger and stronger, hitting harder and harder. But if you can get those kills in there earlier, it increases the chances that Graves won't be able to outplay her in that early game and make it harder for her to get to that critical mass point. And not only is he keeping him busy going around the map with those, with those boots, you can see the exchange in the top there, the Ken Pop and his ultimate to uh, just get out of that one. And, you know, he's having to put the wards down. That's another 75 gold that Slushy is having to spend just to keep track of that mid lane player yeah. and then try and pre warn and maybe try and get down and help anyone that gets pushed. But Robert Lee, they continued shoving this lane. Mackler's having a, a job at keeping it at bay. Hasn't got the Blood Ball currently, so he's going to miss out on a little bit of CS here. But because should be able to keep it at bay. Blue Buff just being transferred across or hasn't been transferred just yet. Sharu is sat in that bush, uses the stun card on towards Yoda, but Yoda just shields that off. Sharu backs away, so they know they have the timer, and look at this, Ro he wants it. Yoda's going for that blue buff, he's trying to keep them at bay. Yeah. And actually, they're just shoving the lane, and Sharu's and Slushi's going to come across and try and steal it. Meanwhile, down the bottom lane, Robert Lee's getting caught out here. The Condemn, the exhaust is enough, but Magda now with that ultimate oh. Condemn, Spellsy on the wall, and just gambles away, but Spellsy flashed at the right time. Meanwhile, in the jungle there, you can see that they did come around and try and get on towards that blue buff. There's Yoda, there's Slushi. I don't think Sharu can fight for this one. No, I don't think so either. Well, oh, they're chasing like Lulu. He, oh, they are chasing Lulu. Wow. I didn't expect Libby to be up He's there. Right he is going to get that vision oh! down. Bane can't quite get over. Can Libby actually finish off this kill himself, though? He's got a snowball, <laughs> and there is the kill. Just trying to auto-attack that damage enough that it was low enough for the kill with a snowball, and that works out nicely for Libby. And, well, 
that will be another one for Meet Your Makers, 5-1. to one. And the funny thing is that the, the first two games have been fairly one-sided for their respective winners each time. And this one is starting to look very one-sided towards MYM again. It certainly is. 5-1. All about the blue side. <laughs> it continues on. The teams yeah. always have that big advantage. Red Buff being picked up by Yoda. So Yoda's trying to keep up. And Red Buff also being picked up by Makata in his own jungle. Sharu there stunning them. Winning. I'm not sure why he chose the stun card. There was no one anywhere near. He's <laughs> just gone for the mana card. But who am I to uh, question some of these top, top pros? Meet your makers versus Absolute Legends. This is game three. If you've just joined us, 1-1 one, one or square. Some fantastic back and forth action. Meet your makers dominating game one. Absolute Legends dominating game two. And it's looking like we may see Meet your makers trying to push the pace on this middle one. And again, there we go. The, the back and forth going on. The pink ward being picked up by Shari this time to clear out the ward. And he does get the slow card down. The stun card actually on towards Slushy. The impales down. Is it going to be enough? Have they got the damage? The shockwave is available. Slushy exhausted. Just going to get away back to the two. But no! The stun card from Shari was enough. And the wild card followed him up. And then again, Yoda having to use his dragon stance to try and get out of that one. And that is going to lead to a dragon joke. Oh, Yoda actually coming around here. We'll walk into Makata and Libic. Not sure that they've really got the damage They're to be getting the kill away. here. Yeah, he's going to be forced away, and that could be the biggest thing about it. Lulu is actually coming up there as well. Blue buff is available. There are three of them around. That's that ward just going to take a couple of hits, but this blue buff being taken very, very quickly. But here comes Jarvan once again and is actually going to smite it away. Now Makata in trouble as the ulti goes down. He flashes away. Robert Lee stunned against the wall from that condemn, but Mackler is there. Can he finish off here onto Yoda? He's going to flash in. One more hit and we'll take it. He heals up. One more. There we go. Finally, Lulu will actually pick up the kill, not leaving it to Robert Lee. Charu is there with Libic as well. Can they finish off Graves or Lulu? There oh. comes the polymorph. And here comes Oriana, shut down, and now Libic has to run for his life. He's in enemy territory, and I'm not sure what his plan is right now. Maybe just <laughs> he's to... got that blood pool. He's off. <laughs> <laughs> he's off. He's <laughs> oh, he's gonna get away around there. Yeah, but Jax, Jax is, coming is coming in from the top side now. He's, he'll have reset that damage, so he will be able to die to the turret. It's 15 if seconds. He dies quick Joe, enough. I'm not sure that's long enough. I'm not sure that's long enough. Jax is gonna get a leap on him. Oh, what oh, damage! Oh, ignite! He ignite. So Ken steals it with the ignite, Brilliant. and he was laughing. Libic was laughing there as well, but not uh, trolling enough. Yeah, oh. but that was a really good fight for Absolute Legends. There, they managed to delay it long enough, and Meet Your Makers they just got a little too aggressive with their advantage, and they've actually pulled it to seven five. There's only one point five k difference now, so all those early advantages they gained have just given all back to them, and you can see that uh, Oriana Slushi there has got that two kills now, and that's immediately led towards the Athenes and Holy Grail being slowly built up. Sharu had that big advantage, but he's kind of lost it out now. And there's also the farm. So how is this going to affect the game? I have no idea. It's so, so even and so, so tight. The shockwave on Sharu. It's not going to be enough damage from him. I don't think that he's ignited down. One more ball. No, he juked the ball. And that will be enough to save his bacon. Very nicely played by Sharu. Meanwhile, down in this bottom, we are going to see Mackle there getting polymorphed. Exhaust come down. Limic now going to be the focus of this push. There is the ultimate and the flash out. And Jarvan gets condemned against the wall. And, well, this Lulu obviously got that double buff after uh, picking up that kill early on. If her, if her slow wasn't already annoying enough, Demon. Absolutely. Oh, top lane, top up. lane. He can see Zagenska going to go down. He's so, so close. And Kubon flashing away there from the counter strike. Wow, these guys are absolutely going back and forth. Dragon attempt now coming out from Absolute Legends as well. They have Makato in close proximity, though. It will be a smite fight, but Yoda wins it. And now Makato's in trouble. He's going to get caught. That Glitter Lance does so much slow there. Sharu oh. did manage to get up and take down Zakent there, but it was to the loss of their own jungler and a dragon. He was just out of position. Now they're going to try and force this mid lane. Sharu's going to come around. Got to be so, so careful he doesn't get caught out coming around. He takes the right path. But Robert Lee's going to have the damage here. Can they manage to churn down this turret? Yeah, they're certainly going to go for it. They've got four men there. They've got a uh, siege minion in with them as well, which, if nothing else, gives them plenty of health to uh, to tank that turret with. Charo just trying his best. Will finish off that siege minion. And that will be absolute legends backing away. Uh, meanwhile, at the... Yeah, bottom. Oh, oh okay. They're, they're going back. Uh, at the top, at least, we have Kuwon pushing in 
for the first tower of the game. We've still not seen that up until now, but looking like these last couple of hits will be enough. And there it is, then opening tower of the game going to MYM. It's a 2,000 gold difference, exactly two kills the difference as well. Yeah, very, very close game here. 2,000, like you mentioned. 14 minutes gone. It was definitely, it was 5-1 at one point. Yeah. Mio Makers had a huge advantage, but do not rule them out. Jax is going to get so, so strong late game. Oriana will definitely become a thing, a problem, but so will Vayne. Vayne keeping up in the CS and ahead in the kills. That could be a huge problem, but we've seen Robert Leon Graves in the last match. He can become a problem of his own, and he can become very aggressive. Zakent farming out, keeping up with uh, Aurelia in this top lane. We always call it the skill matchup, and it's so far very even between the two. Trinity Force slowly but surely being completed. And actually, we're seeing a bit of a, a switch round coming on here. Where is Kubon going? There is no Dragon available. I think he may even try and pressure and try and get a kill on this bottom lane. Keep the pressure for Vayne. We're looking towards it, Makla is there they're gonna have a creep wave he's gonna sneak his way through the push there they've not spotted that he's there and i think if robert lee goes a little bit too aggressive we see that glitter lance come down oh did he just sneak aboard there no kuban showed himself he went did he just auto attack by accident or i, I think uh, honestly i'm not 100 percent sure I, I didn't have my eyes on it fully there but either way it's gonna mean a lot of pressure coming in on towards this tower there's a smoke screen down by grace minions are gone they at this level aren't going to be one heading down. Yeah. Oh, he's backed off. It's a 4v3 possibly here for Absolute Legends. You can see that Jarvan's coming round there. He's going to get spotted. Yeah, they've pinged it. And actually Twisted Fate's going to take advantage and shove that mid turret. He's going to see what he can do. He's going to get the mid turret and he's going to be able to head back down here. Now you can see him heading down. Who are they going to go for? There goes the ultimate, Slushy getting caught out, Slushy exhausted, and now Slushy's in all sorts of trouble, the Lulu ultimate, he's going to try and put the ball out, but he was stun carded so, so well by Sharu there, and now they're going to turn the damage, it's Yoda's going to be the target, he's got an Oracle, the Oracle goes down, now there's a Robert Lee, have they got enough, Livik's going to take the turret damage, they couldn't quite get the Condemn down, but Robert Lee turns it around, the stun card again doing work, and Kubon picks to the kill up, advantage all straight back to meet your makers. Yeah, and Jarvan has used literally everything there in that fight he came down ulted in then flashed out because he wanted to just keep him trapped to allow his team to escape but that means coming in no ultimate no flash for a while um and mym getting back the uh the five kill lead that they had earlier on uh meanwhile in the top lane see Jax and uh and skana are actually having a bit of farm to themselves so skana 23 cs ahead Jax now uh moving up to around about 10 12 cs ahead of irelia Middle lane is pretty much bang even on CS, 103 to 101, but 513 on kills for Twisted Fate, 330 for Oriana. Bottom lane, 114 to 107, so still not a massive difference, but again, Graves has to win early game against Vayne because, well, it's Vayne. <laughs> it's Vayne, and Vayne is 315, has a Phantom Dancer, and Danger is being spelled out for Absolute Legends. Meet your makers. They're gathering for this one. They want the blue buff. They're not going to let him take it away. There's Mokatu coming round, and immediately Yoda's trying to back away. He's going to get impaled. It's Robert Lee, and Robert Lee gets absolutely deleted from the map, as does Jarvan. And now Absolute Legends are in trouble. Oh, the Glitter Lancer's landed. The red buff, sorry, working out. Shockwave, but Makla didn't get caught in it. So Makla is going to tear Slushy apart. Kubon goes in and picks <laughs> up the kill. Scumbag. But it doesn't matter. Yeah, but it's 14-6. They're going for Baron Joe on 17 and a half minutes. Yeah, I mean, always nice to get those kills stacked up on Vayne, but Irelia is another one. She's 2-0-6 no, right now. Oh, they're back, going back away with that Jackson uh, Lulu still alive. Uh, but yeah, just another great play from Meet Your Makers. Got the timings down perfectly with this buff. That's, that's what we saw from them in game number one. That was what was so strong about Meet Your Makers. Those global objectives, the buffs, the dragon was time, time, time over and over again um, and we found that absolute legends were getting caught out of position they didn't have the walls down to really stop that from happening um, and again Skarna flashes in impales graves and the damage that you have there from vain from twisted fate from Irelia you don't survive it you just don't survive it meet makers turning the advantages every time they get a chance they did give it away just once but as it stands they're managing to keep themselves in it twisted fate you can see 417, 614, and those two AP carriers, AP carriers just getting fed across the board. And the damage isn't there at the moment. 
for Absolute Legends. They needed the lane phase to last a little bit longer. Yep. Orianna's got that on the Thieves and Holy Grail, along with the Sorcerer's Boots. So yes, he's got a little bit of damage in there, but we just saw an amazing Robert Lee in the last game, but he can't get it going in this one. 1-4-2, one, got that BF Sword, but can't complete any items. Whereas, you know, we can already see the Phantom Dancer. Let's face it, the Infinity Edge is already underway for him. And at 417, that's just a, such a huge gold advantage. If I look at the gold between the two, you know, 7,300 gold compared to 5,000, it doesn't stack up. And there's another advantage, the Dragon going down. 9K, uh, sorry, 7K. Oh, wow, I can't really can't add up. 7K <laughs> gold difference between the two. Meteor Makers, you know, they're going to have to throw this one for Absolute Legends to get themselves back into it. Or some sort of crazy tower fight, I feel. It's still possible, Joe, because let's face yeah. it, Orianna's there, could land a good shockwave. Jax is there, could land a good counter strike. Anything could happen, but it's a dangerous, dangerous tactic. We do see so often Jax with the ball on his head from Orianna being jumped in. Moscow 5 run that tactic quite often. And if he gets in the right place, you know, gets onto Vayne, takes Vayne out of the game, and if, for example, uh, Sharu and Makla stood next to each other and he jumps onto them, catches them, there's no more damage to come out of them. Well, you could argue Kubon has a bit of damage, actually, but it would certainly knock things down for Meteor Makers. So it, it, Absolute Legends need to land the perfect fight here. Yeah, and they can't mess it up. I mean, for me, the Javan ultimate is always a very... Um, it's not the easiest ultimate to really land uh, and to not... Uh, to having the right position is what well, I want to say. I was going to say, can, it's pretty easy to press R and well, jump it's on easy, It's easy to <laughs> land it, but then it's also easy in its right way to be in the wrong position with that ultimate. And if you're in the wrong position with a Java ultimate, well, you kind of screw your own team up. Well, I mean, you, you've effectively got two nice targets for Oriana, though, to put the ball on. If Yoda's going to jump in and ultimate onto them, get them in the right spot, Kubon, this is this is the sort of things that Meteor Maker's got on for to do. Yeah, they've... That's it, they pinged it and just, you know, backed off. He, Kubon just sensed it there. He, he hadn't seen them with the ward. Just the spider sense, he said, nah, this is a little bit too far up a blind alley. And Mercata actually was in position in that tribus to try and force something here. They are still lingering around, but now they're passing across that ward, so they have the full advantage of it. And that's all about Libic. Libic's just done his work. He's gone around that bush, gone around the jungle, just put the wards down, has full vision of what is happening. So Meteor Maker's currently in full control of the map. Yep, there's more wards even being put down. Actually uh, finished off there. As it went in. And they're stealing away Ray, stealing away whatever they can. And now look at this. Meteor Maker's going in. There's a condemn against the wall. Mackler actually turning around. He didn't realize. Uh, I thought he thought that um, you know, there were more coming in before they actually were. They could have probably picked up that kill and then uh, bolted out of that situation. But again, why risk it? Third and final game of a grand final. It's not Ron the Baron. kind of uh, position where you do risk things. There is Baron being done. And they've seen, oh, okay, Jarvan's going home. Lulu's going yeah, home. Yeah, because they're staying in, in the lane. mid lane. You look in the mid lane. Libic, Libic and Sharu are actually doing work. They're continuing on. They're thinking, okay, got, there can't be any pressure. I mean, who would be on it? And now they'll see it. Now they'll be like, oh, nuts. In a may, maybe a slightly stronger variety. That's as much as I could <laughs> take <Yeah>. it down. <laughs> um, but it's looking like Meteor Makers could pick up their first championship here. But again, it only takes one little mistake. It, it only, only takes, takes a minute. Mistake, girl. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. Well, you got a shaving head now. I, I, I was mistaken for your... Uh, your boyish looks that have uh, come back around. You, you do look a lot younger now, Joe. Can I be honest? What is your girlfriend going to think of this? I don't care. Oh! Oof. No, obviously I do. It's 12.05. She could be listening. <laughs> Hopefully not. Well, at least not uh, not seeing, at least. So that's a good thing. It, it can remain a surprise until later on. <laughs> surprise! you got 10 <laughs> days to get that growth back. Here we go. Sharu's coming in. Glitterlands catching them. Has thrown the stun card out. Shockwave onto him. And he only caught Kubon because he flashed out. They're so used to that shockwave now. They can react so quick to it. And they just managed to avoid the damage. Barrowed up. Meet your makers. Pushing in. Can they pick up their first inhibitor of the game? Blood boil on Makla. <laughs> laughing coming out from Libic. But they haven't got enough to keep them waves clearing. They just keep getting those shots. And Magda quite happy to tank it up. Whoa, look at the damage though from Oriana. That was just one catch of a dissonance and attack ball. And it shredded him down to half health. He's going to back away. He needs to have life steal back. And he hasn't got a bloodthirster just yet. Building towards the infinity edge. There's no sustain. And he's just going to have to manually get it from that Baron buff. Which automatically gives him that health regen. 
again returns to do the work. He just keeps getting those couple of shots off, and that's all he needs, Joe. Just another creep wave, and I suspect they're going to go for it. Yeah, I think so as well. The way that they're setting up really looks that way. <laughs> Makata standing on the ball, laughing, gets the ball on his head. Libic starts laughing, and they're going to start to push in there. Here we go, then. Impale comes down. It's on to Yoda. Jarvan going to be out of it, and that is no Jarvan ultimate in this fight. Libic's ultimate actually getting a good channel off, doing good damage to Slushy, who's actually in real trouble as Makla comes in the side. Robert Lee's going to go down. It's a double kill for Vayne, a double kill for Irelia. Who's going to get the joys of finishing this one? It's Twisted Fate to ace it for MYM. And I think with Vayne, they've got 14 seconds till Jarvan comes up. They may well look to finish the game right here, Demon. Absolutely fantastic shot from Meteor Makers. They knew the timing on that shockwave that Slushy had missed on them earlier on. So that was not available. So they were quite happy to flash and impale. They had no fear of that shockwave. And it is going to be Meteor Makers. Jarvan just absolutely <laughs> condemned out of it. It is going to be Meteor Makers picking up the Intel Extreme Masters Singapore Championships. Their first victory. You can see what it means to them on the stage. Give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. This is their first major event they have ever picked up. And look at it. It means so much to them. And it's great to see new teams breaking through onto the scene like that. <laughs> yeah, really fantastic stuff. We saw them second at World Cyber Games 2011, where they played amazingly, really showed the world. And you know, these guys aren't exactly the oldest in the League of Legends scene either. Um, so, yeah, that's what we... I think what Carmack was, you know, his post on Reddit that he made, this is one thing that we really love to do at Intel Extreme Masters, is to have teams that aren't in every single big tournament always, have their chance to break out, to play on a stage in front of a crowd that love League of Legends, uh, and be, you know, well, they let's, start let's to just, grow and Let's grow just look at it. I mean, Moscow 5. Yeah, Moscow 5. They fire, broke through, yeah. through, came through the qualifiers, full Kiev, and bam, they exploded onto the scene. Question is, will Meet Your Makers do that? Will they match it? They've been around for a while. This is their first big event. The confidence that will breed into them, and you know, coming into this is so big. So going on to their next events, you know, Intel Extreme Masters is going to go on. There's a lot of events, a lot of stops coming up. Have they qualified for Cologne? I'm not sure. Yeah, they have. They have qualified for Cologne. So they're going to be in Cologne in December 14th to 16th already for their next Intel Extreme Masters event. And they're going to be at the World Championships, you know. They've won they've this qualified, event. They've qualified, so they've qualified the, for CBIT that's already. That's the direct uh, slot that they've picked up. So they're going to be at the World Championships. They're going to be in Cologne. Um, and all this experience that they can now bring to the table, you know, the more you can, the more events that you can attend, the better you're going to get. The more you're going to get you used just to get playing that big in front game of the experience, crowd. And that's turned yeah. it on for them. And again, they were in that situation where they'd won the first game, lost the second one. Ocelot said it himself. That's a horrible position to be in, uh, to have uh, won the second game and then lost the second. And he called it. You know, you've got to go second. aggressive. Whoever goes aggressive at the start picks up those kills. The other team doesn't really know how to react. You're like, oh, no, the nerves yeah. set in. The, the, you start making the misplays. You saw the shockwave miss. That was one of the big points. Missed it. They flashed out. They were so quick to react. And then once they go into that turret, you know, a bound up team coming towards you, you don't have your main AP carries ultimate available. Mm. It's danger. And they were quite happy to flash in, impale, get in there. So much damage done. And I don't think I should analyze the game anymore because there's a whole <laughs> table full of analyzers. Analyzers? <laughs> Analysts, <laughs> I think could be the word maybe I'll be after in the English dictionary. Let's get over to Jarrett Kale and the boys. So apparently I'm Jarrett Kale, which is uh, good boy. news. I'm the boy, I'd say. <laughs> so I'd love to be Canadian, but uh, actually I think we are going to go over to Jarrett Kale on the stage for the winter ceremony for Meet Your Makers. It's him though. Oh, okay. Never mind, we actually are going to analyze. Never mind. Hello. Anyways. Hello there. <laughs> Hello, Europe. <laughs> I, I kind of want to do one of these when we came in, like Dr. Evil for, uh, from Austin Powers for Joe, since uh, he has that shaved head. <laughs> all, all right, so man, the, what we just saw is just medium makers wrecking every open in the park. Um, I'm pretty happy because they are European. I am European. You're not European, but I am European. What are and you doing European, in the Europeans won this tournament, so I'm really, really happy. Um, I don't have any relationship with uh, medium makers, but anyways, it makes me happy the fact that they're from, from my region, you know? So, yes, yeah, German. Man, another <laughs> award for us, man. I'm pretty happy, actually. As Joe and Demon were saying, that's the first championship ever. Uh, first time they were at a LAN event for Sunday 1. And congratulations to them. As they also mentioned, they're going to be going to CBIT uh, for the World Finals for uh, AM. And it should be good times uh, when we actually get to that. But the games, we have to, I guess, analyze them a little bit. We're going to just, I guess, go over Absolute Legends throughout the tournament and Meet Your Makers. And uh, day 1, Absolute Legends went 2-1 and one in their bracket. And their games, uh, 
they weren't really really clear cut. In the first one, it was really close. Um, but in the second one, they kind of, you know, stomped pretty hard. But Mitra Makers, throughout the entire tournament, has stomped every game. That was the, the first map they actually lost um, against Absolute Legends. And every game, as uh, Joe and Ian were saying, was just one-sided. Yeah, indeed, it was. Like, I have to be honest, the second game, I didn't expect uh, AL to to come back that much, you know, to, to win the game that easily against Mitra Makers. They did it. That tells me that they got a lot of potential. And all I can say is that, man, you got second in your very first offline event at this very fast big of a line event. That is really, really good, man. Like, you should just keep going, you know? Keep training, keep getting better. And there we go, my friend Xenon. He, he, he wants to say bye, so please sit down with us, please. <laughs> because this is, this, is gonna be, this is gonna be the last time here in Singapore. Right. We are gonna be able to talk to the viewers, actually. So I think it's a good moment. Yes, I, well, I can just uh, tell you why I wasn't here. I was just recording this for uh, German TV, actually. So if you are German and watching this, on the 1st of December at 3 p.m., you'll be able to see this uh, on ZDF Kultur. You'll hear my completely noob cast, where I'll <laughs> probably get everything wrong. What was the key to the last game? It was a lot, because I'm sure I got it wrong. The was, key it, was it just the vein? <laughs> it was vein. It, it was, was just the vein? Vein, yeah, vein. <laughs> the vein in the right. pig, Mackler is so good. Mackler is really, really good. Amazing. That yeah. guy is getting so much better. And did you see how everybody kept stealing kills from vein? Yeah. Everybody? All yeah. the time? Even yeah. Kubon completely unnecessary <laughs> twice <laughs> stole kills. Like, really? Come on, it's vein. You want to get a fed. But it still worked. It still worked. And the, the guys looked so happy. Yeah, yeah man, I was, I'm I was so happy. I kept mentioning the, the little camera and uh, <laughs> the lower right icon. like, look at their face. Look at this. Like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> so happy. <laughs> Are you happy too, Jason? Yeah. I mean, it's great to see it. I've been casting them for the past four months when I've been with ESL TV, seeing them just come so close and yet just yeah. so far away. And it's good to see them finally win for once. And that last game, I, I wanted to point out the Baron, the sneaky Baron, because uh, also like we're talking about it, they, it wasn't really noticed. I mean, because yeah. we had two people pushing that mid lane, but with a vein, you should always expect an early Baron. They even started without, without the Vayne, uh, so they did a lot of damage to Baron before Vayne even went there, but then of course, as once she was there, it was like, damn, yeah. done. It was very cool game yeah. to watch, and I'm, honestly, I'm happy for Absolute Legends that they did bring it to a third game, and very deservedly. Yeah, the did. second game, very, very happy. So Let's be honest, played nobody, well nobody expected uh, We were talking about yeah. it before. I, honestly, on German TV, they had me do like a little moderation before mm -hmm. the game, and I said, if the Americans bring this to a third game, they can take that as like a, a respect win, yeah, so to indeed. speak. And that's exactly what happened. And the second game, I must say, that was impressive. Yeah, and not to mention it was the first uh, actual three map we had yeah. <laughs> in this tournament. Um, but Jared is ready with... Uh, wait, wait. Let's say oh. bye, please. Oh, okay. Let's, let's oh, say goodbye. Please. All right. All right, guys. I enjoyed the cool <laughs> kids' desk a lot. What? what? Come on. Come on. Yeah, let, let me have this. Let it, me have this. It, it was pretty fun. Yeah. Thank it you very much to everybody. Yes. <laughs> I enjoyed <laughs> myself so much here. Thank you very much. Jason? Yeah, it's been great. Hope you guys enjoyed it. <laughs> He's American. But we're going to go over to Jericho. <laughs> we're going to go over to Jericho on the stage with the winners, Mitri Makers of Intel Extreme Masters, Singapore. What a final. Please give it up for both teams for a very, very hard fought win. And please give it up for our sponsors, BenQ and Patriot and Intel and Twitch TV. For, for helping so much to put this all together and make it happen for us and for eSports. Big round of applause, please. Now to help me present the trophy and the checks to both teams, I'm gonna invite on stage some VIPs from two of our biggest sponsors. Uh, first, please welcome Martin from BenQ. Stand right here, Mark. Right here. Yep. And Elin from Intel. Thank you. And the runners up, Absolute Legends NA. Presenting the check for $6,500, Martin from BenQ.
Thank you, Martin. And presenting the trophy to the runner-up. Who's the captain? Who's the captain? He's the captain. Elin from Intel. Is he trolling? He's trolling. He be trolling. Raise it up, guys. Yeah. Check, show your money off. And while you didn't quite win the whole thing, one of you did win the MVP of the tournament and are, and are going home with a bunch of great stuff from our sponsors. Sorry? Oh. Uh-oh. Miscommunication and heartbreak. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll put you in my movie. That was the prize, that you're in my movie! Yeah! They're in the movie! They're in the movie! Sorry, guys. All right, we'll make some room here. And we'll bring out the champions of the Intel Extreme Masters Singapore. Meet your makers. Congratulations, guys. Good job. Awesome. So well done. So well thought. Sorry. Not much room up here. See those checks. Okay. We're presenting the check for $15,500. Martin from BenQ. That is a lot of money. If you have an extra check, I think I did a pretty decent job this week. Oh, I can have the trophy too. After the trophy. And I might have I might have spoiled the surprise. But one of you also won the MVP of the tournament. Going home a lot of stuff, so. MVP, Kuban. And Martin's got all your stuff, man. Check it out. Ben QXL monitor. Intel i7 stream. Oh my god, Patriot memory, solid state hard drive. Uh, a lot of duty awaiting you when you get back to Poland at the border. It's gonna be great. Congratulations, man. And the most important thing of all, the trophy to the champions presented by Elin from Intel. Give it up, seriously, yell, woo! Come together. Let's, let's all fit in a big photo, everybody. Yeah! Woo! Thank you. And that concludes day three of the Intel Extreme Masters, the end of the law portion of the tournament. Please join us tomorrow for the finals of the StarCraft II portion as they fight for $32,000. Again, a big shout out to our sponsors, BenQ and Intel and Patriot Memory and Twitch TV for making this happen. Please join us tomorrow. It's going to be so epic. Have a good night.